Hi, uh, this is the uh, this is the uh, Tuesday, May tenth, uh, six o'clock p.m. Uh, stakeholder meeting for District Six, sponsored by the Alliance for Better District Six, the Alexander Tennis Association, the North Market Business Association, and the Tennis Association Coalition, San Francisco, including our uh, community partner at Tip Top Market. Uh, today uh, we are going to have our regular monthly meeting and first thing we do is uh, introductions which to my right is uh, uh, my name is Michael Nolte I'm my name is Michael Nolte I'm the executive director of the Alliance to my right is my name is Barbara Phillips I'm president parliamentarian public safety chair land use chair legislative analyst and tonight acting secretary and I'm resident of this building I live on the 12th floor I'm Kelly, and I am a senior at San Francisco State University, and I'm here to give a presentation with my colleague, Matthew, about textile waste. My name is Matthew. I am a, a six-year senior at San Francisco State. Um, yeah, that's about it. Matthew. Thank you. <laughs> All right, Susan. Okay. My name is Susan Bryan. I am a resident and I'm the treasurer of Lance for Better District 6. And I'm I live locally. All right. Uh, we, uh, we have regular ground rules, which include um, that um, uh, to speak responsibly, responsible at, at, for every issue, to try to be positive and try not to dispense distract the speakers and uh, there's other things like how to deal with door prices and food on the back of your agenda. Um, so I want to move on to uh, the membership committee. Uh, we always ask our members uh, to renew or keep current their membership dues and uh, as soon as you like you can pass around the donation and um, there's only two ways how this organization is funded. One is by membership dues and the other is Donations on our donation. Just want to pass around the donation. Let, let's okay. pass on that later. Up. Later. Okay. okay. Yeah. Um, so next on the agenda is um, oh, I guess I should have adoption to to accept the agenda. I so move. Um, I, I, I move to okay. adopt the agenda. Okay. All those say aye. Aye. All right. Um, Executive Director's Report. Um, uh, our business license for 2016-2017 have been renewed. Uh, the Alliance for Better District 6 yearly membership with the Low Income Housing Coalition and other memberships including the uh, South of Mark, South of Mark and Business Association um, have been renewed for this year. Uh, the Alliance for Better District 6 had, will be sending uh, Michael Nolte at, to represent uh, us in the um, Flavors of San Francisco Small Business Week event on May the 23rd. Uh, several alliance for Bear District 6 board members will plan to attend the uh, TNDC's uh, 35th annual board uh, uh, birthday celebration on May the 17th. Uh, we are still trying to get our keys issued for our organizational box. Our uh, PO box, our PO box has been relocated to Fox Plaza, uh, Postal Station, and uh, both Michael Nolte and uh, Susan Brock have decided to cease as administrators for the Tenderloin Futures Collaborative. You can see page two of the May issue of the Central City Extra as uh, of May, May 1st that we've uh, decided to cease administration. Um, other community groups have been duplicating uh, our they're, are duplicating such services in the community. Uh, the example is the Tenderloin Museum, the, t the town hall, the, the hall, and other nonprofit de uh, departments such as TEDC, Tenderloin Housing Clinic, CHP, uh, Hospitality House, and others are duplicating what the Tenderloin Futures Collaborative has been doing for 15 years. Um, other item is, uh, lastly, we tried to get a speaker to this, but we weren't able to for today's meeting, but uh, Jane Kim has introduced legislation to honorary rename the 100 block of Taylor Street to uh, 
Jane Captain's uh, cafeteria way. Contact Jane Kim's office for more details at 415-554-7970. Now, we had a uh, preference um, to speak next on the agenda, so we're going to give that to uh, Matthew Victor. Which one's your first name? Matthew's my first okay. name. Okay. <laughs> a little yeah, too first names. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So could you just stand right here yeah, and totally. do your presentation? Sure. <clears throat> He has to get back to school. School's good. Yeah. Doesn't like, okay. feel that way right now. Okay. Yeah. Finals, but that's okay. Okay. All right, guys. Well, thank you guys for being here. Uh, my name is Matthew Victor. Uh, this is Kelly. She is, uh, we are both interns at the Goodwill. Um, we are currently working on outreach programs in terms of reaching out to local communities and talking to everyone about textile waste and the impacts that they cause. Um, the, uh, the textile impacts that we've been researching and we've been trying to share, we've talked to many other local community groups and uh, we actually got a chance to talk to um, the, the Youth Commission at City Hall. That was a really good one for us. Um, but what we're trying to do ultimately is get San Francisco residents to lower their the impacts, uh, well, yeah, lower their textile waste create better impacts for sure. Um, our goal is to cut impacts within the next 12 months uh, to cut textile waste. Uh, this is through the, uh, the SF environment, I believe, right? Yeah. So we're funded by the, a grant by the SF Department of the Environment, um, which does require us to go out and tell people about what we're doing. So uh, uh, the SF Department of Environment, the Goodwill, and the, the Youth Leadership Organization uh, have all come together to create this campaign and um, it's basically advancing San Francisco's zero waste goal, which we have um, right now, I think about 80% diversion rates, but we want to have 100% of our textile, of our overall waste be diverted from landfills by 2020. Mm -hmm. And we're, we have a little bit of a shorter presentation. We typically have some visual aids with a projector, but no, uh, no projector there. So um, are you aware of what textiles are in terms of the environment waste? Are you talking about clothing, or are you talking about more than clothing? Yeah, so... I, I didn't know when, when you... It's a little bit of everything, Michael. Um, we, we are definitely talking about clothing. We're also talking about jewelry, shoes... Handbags. Handbags, carpets. There's a lot of... Any fibrous material typically is considered a textile. Um, so that's what we're trying to keep out of the landfills right now. Uh, uh, why are we doing it? Because everyone wears textiles and everyone wastes them. Um, we're trying to keep everyone from throwing them into the trash can instead of in, in terms of giving them more giving them a second life So that's kind of our biggest thing right there um, So I guess what you're you would be since you're kind of working with Goodwill you would be trying to get people to um, uh, Either donate it to uh, causes or 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 do a garage sale or something like that? Yeah, so basically we're not asking, you know, to give to the Goodwill. We're asking to <laughs> specifically to be smarter about the way you get rid of your clothes, whether that is through, like, um, repurposing, so making, you know, new, like, using your old T-shirts as rags for cleaning up your house or uh, making, like, creating an art project with your old stuff or even, yeah, donating. Uh, but the fact of the matter is that with 6,000 6, homeless in San Francisco and 11.3% of the people living under the poverty line, we are getting rid of a lot of really cheap, affordable clothes um, that we could give to people who are in much more of a need. And then we're also, um, the textile reclamation industry employs 85 times more people on a per ton basis than the uh, incinerators and landfills do. So not only are we giving clothing, cheaper clothing to people who need it, we're also providing more local jobs to people in San Francisco. Yeah. Yeah. And then oh, one more thing too, the other, the other importance behind it is that because we have no uh, landfills in San Francisco, the need to truck out our textile waste comes to about the fact that alone in San Francisco every single hour we're getting rid of about 4,500 pounds of textile waste. So um, that all has a lot of a large effect on our greenhouse um, emissions. And so by recycling, donating, and reusing the textiles that we do have, 
we're also decreasing our greenhouse gas emissions and we're less uh, making less of an impact on communities who are already hurt by the presence of the anvils there. Yeah. Um, so when somebody is disposing of the uh, textile, which container do you use? You get the blue or the, so the you, green or the black? Yeah, so that's the issue, so you don't use any of those. Um, Clothes, a lot of the clothes that we have now are made of so many woven fibrous materials that they're they're not able to be composted. And so when they sit in a landfill, they release methane. Um, and it's too too rigorous of work to separate the compostable materials from the ones that are not. So that is the thing. You have to go to a, a donation center or um, a local thrift shop or a you know, garage. So it falls somewhere. into the other category. Yeah, it falls into uh, consumer responsibility and that's the issue which is why we're kind of talking to people is that it, it, it does come on the backs of people being responsible mm -hmm. with their products. So this would just be like um, also when people get rid of their batteries mm -hmm. and fluorescent light bulbs and other such matters yeah. where they can't put them into the, the, different the regular trash cans. Yeah. So, um, recyclables. I mean I know specifically like I said we're not trying to promote the Goodwill. Um, we're, we're just saying overall donate your clothes but the Goodwill does have things like go bins where they have like a sensor when they get filled up they're putting around the city but there's plenty of other things I've seen around the city too and I'm not sure who they're run by but just uh, donation sites that you can put your stuff in. Yeah a cool part about the go bins for example is that like they can sit in a big apartment complex or a housing community and then they automatically send a message to like the Goodwill and when to come pick them up so that's kind of a cool little system that the Goodwill has been working on. Um, that's their like newest technology, but we're not trying to promote them. We're just spreading the awareness of textiles and waste overall. So, so just uh, out of another question, yeah. is uh, where do you think Google, Google Will's going to relocate when they uh, tear down some of that site at, um, on Mission Street? No way. Don't you know about that. I don't. No. We don't know anything about that. Well, so you're you're the come, easy go, easy come, easy go. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We're at a short. Well, you know, we uh, have your art there. Well, I'm just telling you that the city's changing so much now yeah. that, totally. that, you know, when you say by the end of the year, there might not be no place to send them there uh, mm -hmm. either. And mm -hmm. I know that, that that facility is the biggest donation center of all of the other locations, but there are a fair amount of other ones within the city that right. accept right. Uh, donations. I'm just saying that this the problem with the single-story uh, corner yeah. facilities that the developers have looked at all and said, hey, that looks like a good place to <laughs> put another <laughs> right. something right on. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Like all the all the uh, car washes nearby, same thing. Gas mm -hmm. stations. Uh, getting rid of all. all the getting rid of all this this uh, parking lots, kind of all are going. Mm -hmm. you know, like that yeah, I got some maybe not question not questions, but I mean there 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 are uh, companies that basically shred blue jeans mm -hmm. to make insulation. Yeah. And there's you know like there's a whole there's a whole cottage industry of you know. Uh, of, uh, I have a friend that actually pulled a Eddie Bauer uh, jacket, pea jacket, out of the Goodwill as is, and it's in, it's in good condition. You know, I mean, so people, you know, like, you know, this is one of the great finds of the, uh, uh, you know, that you know, the designer clothing or something. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, you can find some nice stuff at thrift stores, which is also one of the benefits of it. Uh, but yeah, honestly, like talk making uh, in insulation yeah. Oh, yeah insulation for houses like with uh, materials and I know that they're like making furniture with shredded up t-shirt materials mm -hmm. and stuff so looking for um, you know out of the box ideas but basically just really avoiding throwing it in your trash can because it does some pretty damaging effects to the environment and takes up a ton of space like the amount every year in a landfill that we like put this amount of textiles that we put in there it's enough to cover 2,300 football fields and a foot of textile. Uh -huh. So, you know, that's obviously a lot of space that we could be. Um, yeah, and, you, and you, you're not going to be buying very many rolls of paper towels if you could cut a t-shirt in half. Exactly. Or I should say the front and the back mm -hmm. both make sure. a, almost the right size for a t-shirt. Yeah. Yeah. There's just, I mean, by a dish towel. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so there's things you can do. That's just kind of, you know, uh -huh. where we're coming out here. And, trying to spread the awareness yes. really yeah that's kind of all we wanted to talk about was just the ways that you can use your textiles in other ways other than just throwing them away 
I use in minus this neighborhood, we, we do tend to, I mean, a lot of people do tend to use everything they can get their hands yeah. on. <laughs> that's, that's the other thing, too, is, you know, we are getting rid of so much cheap clothing. Like, well, they put it in bales and they send it overseas. People buy the bales and then they, you know, then they, you know, they go down the river, they go down the road and they're selling the, the clothes, to, you know, for other things. Yeah. You know? So, yeah, there, totally. you know, there's a whole bunch of people getting money off of it. Where do you get to school? San Francisco State. South State. We get study. I'm an environmental studies major. Yeah. I'm a marketing major. Wow. Wow. A little different. <laughs> a little different. law school. A little law school. Sorry. What's that? He's thinking law school. Ah, oh, cool. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> well, I could argue for a living. Yeah, I could. <laughs> All right. Well, that's I all I think that was it, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you we very really much. Appreciate yeah, it. we really do. Uh, we're going to put this up on YouTube. Okay. Cool. And uh, uh, I can give you the uh, link. Oh, or the link will go. Uh, the li the link will go to. Uh, we have a Facebook page. Yeah. It'll probably be posted there, but also uh, she has a uh, YouTube account where it's. Mm -hmm. Cool. So yeah. Uh, so. Let's see. You got a piece of paper. Uh, Okay, okay, I can give you my hand. Okay, there any other questions? I'll give you my hand. Um, and, uh, All right. I guess, uh, S, U, E, R. Can we move on to our next speaker? Uh, oh, sure. David. Uh, Thanks very much. Uh, that's your hand. E, U, S, I, O, N? No, all one. Oh. Sue Rose, Sue Rose, uh, U.S. at, make that an at. <laughs> at, uh, okay. So Rosie is six, right? I forgot about that. Okay, so Rosie so is six. Six. perfect. Yeah, and then it's all one. Okay. At, at uh, YouTube.com. Okay. Yeah, I've got a lot of other things here that I can okay. <laughs> All right, thank you so much. Okay. Yeah, you can send your families the link. Well, thank you very much for having me here today. Uh, we won't break. Okay. Say who you are to the camera. Hi, my name is David Seward. I'm the uh, Chief Financial Officer for University of California Hastings College of Law. Uh, I want to thank you guys for inviting me out here again. I thought I'd just give you an update on where we're at with our long range campus plan and answer any questions that you guys have. Um, as, I, as I go to the last time, we're in the process of creating what, in effect, will be a pretty major change on Golden Gate Avenue. Golden Gate Avenue and the township, mainly Golden Gate. We're building a new uh, 57,000 square foot academic building, a teaching building at 333 Golden Gate Avenue, which is currently the site of the uh, demonstration gardens that Casey Asbury uh, manages. It's a very uh, exciting project. We are in the middle of our, uh, our CEQA review, the California Environmental Quality Act. Uh, we've published our draft environmental impact report, which uh, Mr. Coates uh, has. And uh, so this project has a number of iterations. So we have four structures and a piece of vacant land. We did uh, extensive building engineering studies and concluded we had major issues with both our primary teaching facility, our current teaching facility, at 198 in the with an annex added in the backside, really bad building in Golden Gate and uh, High, that was 1970. Then our other challenge is we have a, a student housing facility at 100 McAllister, McAllister Tower, that uh, needs to be modernized and has not had the benefit of a structural upgrade, and so we really need to address that as well. So the plan is to, with the support of the state of California, the uh, Construct a new academic building at 333 Golden Gate. Uh, it would be completed in late 2019, early 2020. And upon the completion of that new academic building, we would tear down the existing 198 McAllister structure and create additional student housing. Student housing is a commodity in critically short supply. Uh, Hastings has about 900 plus um, JD students, law students. Creating additional student housing would give our students some financial relief. Students not having an 
navigate what is by all accounts a brutal uh, rental market. <laughs> and it will also allow us to fund the completion of 